As an editor, I am always looking for ways to speed up my process and turn over projects quicker. That way, the client's happier and you're able to make some more money. When I was first starting out, it took me literally forever to finish projects. Mostly that's just because I was still figuring out the program, developing my own editing style, and it just takes longer because you need to do everything through trial and error. Now that I've been editing for a long time, there's a few tips and tricks that I like to use on all of my projects that really just streamline the whole process and allow me to spend more time focused on the creativity. Here's a few of those. The first one of these is actually something that I didn't learn about until I'd been editing for a while, and it's saving multiple effects or keyframes as presets. This is super helpful when you end up using either the same effects or the same keyframe movements over and over again. Instead of having to continuously add them, you can just save it as a preset drag and drop that onto your clip, and boom, it's automatically applied. All you need to do for this is add some effects onto your clip. You can select multiple effects by clicking on one and then holding down command and selecting the next. From there, you just right click and choose save preset. This will bring up a drop down window which gives you a few options. You can rename your preset, add in a description, and there's also an option for type of preset. If you have an effect that has keyframes on one clip and then you transfer it onto another clip, since the second clip won't be the exact same length, basically what these three options do is they allow you to choose the anchor point of where you'd like the effect to start and end. If you want the duration of your keyframes to change depending on the length of the clip, then choose scale. If you want the duration of your keyframes to stay the same, then choose either of the other two options, depending on if you want it to anchor to the beginning of your clip or the end of your clip. Once you've saved your keyframes, all you need to do to access them is go over to your effects tab and click the drop down arrow on the presets bin. From there, you'll see all the ones that you've previously saved, and you can easily drag and drop them onto your footage to apply. Some of my favorite presets are effects or motions that I tend to use a lot throughout my edit. This could be just a simple push in where I adjust the scale by 10 or 20% throughout the duration of a clip, or a pull out. This is also useful on effects when I like to keyframe them a lot like adding in blur, or when I like to use multiple effects on the same clip repeatedly. I like to do this for warp stabilizer and lumetri color because I tend to add those on to a lot of different clips. And so instead of doing them separately, I can just add them at the same time. My next tip, which is a huge time saver, is using proxies, especially if you're editing with 4K footage. Unless you edit on a super spec'd out computer, lots of times it's hard to get smooth playback when you're using footage that's shot in a really high resolution. What proxies are is it essentially makes a copy of your clip, but in a much lower resolution, like 720p. Then it replaces the high quality version with the low quality version in your timeline. So when you're playing through, it can play smoothly because all the clips are in low resolution. Then when you export, Premiere will automatically replace the low quality footage back with the high quality footage and include any effects and transitions and everything else that you've included during your edit. Making proxies is one of the first things that I do whenever starting any new project. To do that, you just go over to where you've imported your footage and select all the clips that you want to turn into proxies. Right click on the clips and go down to where it says proxy. Then choose create proxies. This will bring up a drop down menu with a few options. The format that I like to choose is H.264 and for the preset I choose H.264 low resolution proxy. Generally what I like to do is go down to this destination setting and instead of saving the proxies next to their original media, I create a dedicated folder specifically for the proxies. This is good because if your high resolution footage is saved in multiple folders across your computer, if for some reason your proxies get disconnected and you end up having to relink them, it's going to be a nightmare to go through all the folders to try and find the proxies. If you just save them all to one proxy folder, all you have to do is locate that folder and relink all the footage from there. As soon as you hit OK, what it's going to do is it's going to bring up a separate software called Adobe Media Encoder. This is just Adobe's encoding software. It comes free with Premiere, so if you have that, you'll also have Encoder. It's nice because this allows you to render out multiple things in the background while you can still edit within Premiere. What you are going to need to do is make sure that you have proxies enabled within Premiere. The button for this looks like two frames that are swapping back and forth. And if for some reason you don't see this in your toolbar, you want to go down to this little plus arrow that brings up the button editor. And this will give you a wide variety of other buttons to choose from. So just find the toggle proxies one, and then you can drag that over into your toolbar and leave it there. While this is selected, if you look at your footage, you'll notice that it's now using the lower resolution footage. 
If for some reason you want to bring back the high resolution footage to view it in your edit, all you need to do is unselect the toggle proxies button and boom, your high quality footage will be back. The final tip that I have for speeding up your editing process is using motion graphics. Motion graphics are basically templates for things like text or effects that have been previously made and you can download them and then drag and drop them into Premiere. There's a number of different platforms that offer these online, such as Motion Array or Envato Elements, and you can search through their entire library of things that have been previously created by other motion graphics designers. You can download those and then add them into your projects. Most of them are totally customizable too, so you can adjust it to fit the look that you're going for. You can also create your own. If there's a certain effect or a type of titling that you really like and want to continue to use, all you have to do is right click on it and choose export as motion graphics template. Premiere has a tool called the Essential Graphics Panel, which is basically just a library where you can include all of the different motion graphics that you've created or downloaded to choose from. You can simply drag and drop them into your project and then edit the parameters from within the Essential Graphics Panel. If for some reason you don't see the Essential Graphics Panel in your workspace, all you need to do is go up to Window and then scroll down to where it says Essential Graphics and make sure it's checked. And there you have it. Those are a few of my favorite tips that I like to use in order to speed up my editing workflow. If you guys learned something new from this video, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. It really means a lot to me when I get to see how I'm helping you guys out. If you have any other suggestions for future tutorials, leave them in the comments as well. Thank you for taking the time to watch through this video. I hope you were able to learn something new and speed up your editing process as a result. I'll see you next week.